Good morning, church. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Jesus lives. Amen. He lives. Come on and make some noise in this place this morning. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Destiny Christian Center, where we love God, we love others, and we serve the world. I'm Lady Reva, and this is Bishop Keith O'Neill, and he's going to open up our scripture this morning. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. I tell you, you get so used to doing things a certain way. I forgot we were up here today. Hallelujah. Let me get the scripture. Hallelujah. Revelation. Amen. Right. Exactly. All right, Revelation chapter number 5. You're reading your hearing in the first 10 verses. Thank you <laughs> for helping a brother. All right, the word of the Lord. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. So far the scripture. Amen. Before we get started praying this morning, I want to see how many people in this place have breath in their lungs this morning. If you have breath in your lungs this morning, come on, let me see somebody, some hands from praise and thanksgiving to our God. I'm reminded of the apostolic people in the apostolic church when it's time to pray, everybody is praying. Not just the one person that's up here, but everybody has something on their lips to give thanks and praise to God for this morning. So can we open up our mouths this morning and get something on your mind, get something in your heart to give God praise this morning because he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. God, we praise you this morning. We magnify you, God, for being a great God. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us, God. Hallelujah. And paying our sin debt. God, we couldn't pay it, but you paid it, God. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son. For whosoever believeth in you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for breath. We thank you for good health. We thank you for being a provider for us. We thank you for being a way maker. We thank you for being a worthy, worthy, worthy God who is worthy to be praised. God, we love you, God. We come to give you our best praise this morning with our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, the blood of Jesus this morning, it will never lose its power. 
Amen. You come to get something this morning. Get your faith up in this place because God is about to do something. Amen. Amen. Everybody participating. Let's give God a great big hand clap of praise. And let's get ready to worship.
Is he worthy? Is he worthy this morning? Y'all know it's too quiet for me this morning. For all that Christ has done for us. All that he has done for us. Let's give him a shout of praise. when I have this microphone, we're going to move a little bit, okay? So we're going to get out from our seats, and we are free this morning. How many of you are free? Jesus has redeemed us, and we're going to praise the Lord this morning.
to worship him this morning because we're really excited. If you haven't been able to tell yet, we're excited to celebrate who Jesus is. And coming to the stage right now, we have our children's ministry and they have some things they want to talk to you about. Now they're going to play a little game with you. And the game is called, Who Am I? Now, I want you to listen to their speeches. And if you've been reading your Bible, you're going to know who they're talking about. And if you can't answer them, we're going to read our Bible some more. Amen? All right, they're coming. Give them a hand. It's nerve-wracking as an adult to be up here. But for the children to be up here is a lot. My name is, C or Jesus named me Cephas. I did not want Jesus to wash my feet. I had a brother named Andrew. I tried to walk to Jesus on the water. Jesus told me I'd deny him three times and I did. Who am I? Peter. spices to wrap Jesus' body in for his burial. I helped Joseph lay Jesus' body in the tomb. I was a Pharisee. I was a member of a Sahiri. I asked Jesus how I could be born again. Who am I, Nicodemus? My father's name was Simon. Who am I? I was just pleased when a warm woman put her expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. I took care of the supper's money. Who am I? Before I left the, the last supper, Jesus gave me a piece of bread dipped in a dish. I betrayed Jesus with a kiss. I am Judas. I am governor of Judea. I recognized that Jesus was innocent. I had Jesus beaten. I handed Jesus over to be crucified. I released Barabbas from prison. Who am I? I'm Pilate. I was a member of the council, but secretly. Who am I? I asked... I asked... Hmm? I asked Pilate for Jesus' body. I came from a town called Arimathea. Who am I? I, uh, I asked Pilate for Jesus... I took Jesus' body down from the cross and put it in my tomb. Who am I? I'm Joseph. Jesus stayed at my house before his triumphant ride in Jerusalem. Who am I? I love to listen to Jesus speak and my sister once scolded me for it. Who am I? I poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. He rose my brother from the dead. Who am I? My name is the same name as Jesus' mother's name. Who am I? Mary. My father's name was Zebedee. I was a fisherman before Jesus called me. 
uh, Jesus sent me into the city to prepare for the Passover meal, and I wrote the book of Revelations. Who am I? John. I insisted we accompany Jesus to Bethany when Lazarus died. Who am I? I was fishing with Peter when Jesus appeared to us on the Sea of Tiberias after his resurrection. I was also called Didymus at the last summer. I asked Jesus to show us the way. Who am I? I wanted to see the nail marks in Jesus' hands before I believed he was raised from the dead. Who am I? Thomas. <laughs> I was the first disciple to be martyred. Who am I? I was a disciple of John the Baptist before I was a disciple of Jesus. Jesus gave me the nickname which means Sons of Thunder. Who am I? I was one of the three disciples Jesus took deeper into the Garden of Gethsemane on the night he was betrayed. Who am I? James. <laughs> My parents were from Nazareth. Who am I? I always did what my father told me to do. Who am I? I spent over a month in the desert. Who am I? I turned water into wine. Who am I? I died on the cross. Who am I? I am the bread of life, the truth on the vine. I am Jesus.
<laughs> Come on, let's give him another hand. Beautiful. He's going to help me preach in a minute. <laughs> Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song, beautiful picture of what heaven's going to be like. This day is about for God so loving the world. Gave his life for us. So I'm just so thankful that all of you are here on this resurrection day. Come on, let's give the Lord just one hand clap of praise while you're here. Bless your name. Jesus, we love you. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. How about you? I am Dr. Keith O'Neill. I'm the lead pastor here at Destiny Christian Center International in big time. Muncie, Indiana. Y'all got it. You got it. You got it. And we're thankful for to be in God's presence. Thankful for all of you who are in the house and sanctuary. For all of you who are watching online. Thank you for joining us today. We are celebrating the king of the universe. His name is Jesus and he is alive. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Is a great God. So we're thankful that you have joined us uh, for our worship experience today and bring in some of your friends and neighbors and co workers. We're thankful uh, for all of you. Now we know we've got a lot of guests and we won't make you say uh, anything today, but if you're here for the first time, you've never been here before, just wave at me. Anybody here for the first time, just wave at me a little bit. Amen. Praise God. We're thankful for all of you and we love to worship here we love to give God glory he is worthy to be praised and so we want to welcome you uh, to Destiny Christian Center if you so choose you don't have to but you can uh, text the word welcome uh, to the number 765-612-0809 there'll be a little message on there a little opportunity for you to let us know your experience uh, we hope and pray and we've been practicing so to speak uh, to make you welcome we are thankful that you are here and you decided to worship with us. Uh, after the service, my wife will be out in the lobby area uh, where the first time guests are. You can just see her out there. She's got a team out there that will uh, be a blessing to you. They've got some little gifts and things like that for you. And uh, she gives great hugs, so you don't want to leave the service without one of those. Amen. So, come on, Destiny, let's give our first time guests a good God bless you. Amen. Thankful for coming. Amen. If you're online, just put I'm new or a wave or something like that in the chat. Somebody will respond to you. We're thankful uh, that you are here. Everybody doing well today? Feeling good? All right. Great, great, great. All right. Well, our, our normal custom is that we kind of get up out of our seats and uh, we just greet two or three or four or five people, give them a nice fist bump or hug, a smile or something like that. Amen. So stand on your feet. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our band play a little song. Amen. Let's find somebody. Show yourself friendly. Come on. Maybe find somebody you don't know. Welcome. Welcome to destiny. Welcome to the place where there's
back to your seats. Praise God. Amen. All right, let's praise God for the ministry of giving. Let's do that. Praise God. Amen and amen. All the ways that you can give uh, electronically are on the screen there. Amen. If you're in the sanctuary and you want to use an envelope or you want to write a check or something like that, uh, there are two boxes back there on our media room uh, wall. It's a black boxes with a slot in there. You can just drop it in there, and the right people will get that. And we're thankful for your generosity over the years. Thankful for you being here. Amen, amen. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. We thank you for who you are, for how good you've been. Everything that we have, Father, belongs to you. So we honor you in this way. It's not a debt that we owe. It's a seed that we sow. And the seed that leaves our hand does not leave our life, but goes into our future where it multiplies and returns again. So we give you praise. We honor your presence. Thank you so much for every person, every family, every life. It's a privilege to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Amen. All right. I believe our announcements are coming, I think. Yes? That's what I thought. <laughs> announcements are coming, and then our choir, and then the word of the Lord. Don't they look good up here? Amen. And you know what? We got open auditions. Amen. Just let Pastor Leah know and we, we'll put you in there. All right. As long as you can sing on key. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to Destiny, where we love God, love others, and serve the world. My name is Stephanie, and on behalf of our lead pastor, Dr. Keith O'Neill and Lady Reva O'Neill, we want to welcome you to service today. We hope you are enjoying your time so far here at Destiny. Just a reminder, if you are a first time guest, please take a moment to text the word WELCOME to 765-612-0809. We would love to get some information to you. Again, text the word WELCOME to 765-612-0809 and one of our pastors will connect with you. Each week, we take a brief moment to let you know what's happening around Destiny. We want to provide you and your family every opportunity possible to jump in and get involved. So let's take a look at a few things coming up right here at Destiny. Please join us at Destiny on April the 6th at 9.30 a.m. for Faith and Fitness. Training your spirit to say yes to God, one healthy choice at a time. Please sign up on the mobile app or on the info wall in the lobby by March 31st so we can prepare for you. See you there. See you at Destiny. Are you ready to take the next step in your journey with Christ? Baptism is a great way to publicly declare your love for Jesus and announce your decision to follow Him. There are a few ways that you can sign up for baptism here at Destiny. The easiest way is to go to the mobile app and click the Made New tab. Put your information in this secure space and one of our pastors will connect with you. If you are attending in person today, you can visit the information station right outside in the lobby to sign up there. Make sure you sign up soon so that we can prepare for you.
What's that sound? It's time for softball season. All right, let's go. Taylor, it's softball season time. Come on, I need your help. We gotta go find some more guys for the church softball team. Okay, let's go. What did the doctor say? It's a stretch factor. I'll be on three months. Three months? The season starts in six weeks. Come on, let's go call some guys to join the church softball team. Okay, let's go. Why is Kedrick still here? Kedrick, softball season is starting and you're late for the first practice. Three days later. Lord, what are we gonna do? We need more players for the softball team. Cooper's hurt. Kaylor has to work. Kedrick has to work. Tim's coaching his son's baseball team. We're basically down to nothing. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel trying to find players. <laughs> Although there is one more option. <laughs> Hi, Lady Reva. Could I speak to Bishop O'Neill? Hey, Destiny, it's Rob Padgett here, and it's almost time to play ball! As you can see from the videos, we've got guys that are injured, guys that have to work, and guys that are coaching their kids in Little League sports this summer. And so that's why we need you to sign up to play softball with us this summer. This is our fourth season hosting the Muncie Area Church Softball League right here at our own Destiny Field. Practice starts in the middle of April and the games begin May 4th. Sign up in the lobby today. Thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions, you can stop by the info tables in the lobby or message us in the chat or on any of our other online platforms. The best way not to miss anything at Destiny is to download the Destiny mobile app from your app store. You can search for Destiny Muncie and you'll find us. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Let's take this time this morning to just reflect on what God has done for you and why it would make you want to shout this morning.
Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank God. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but it makes me want to shout. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody ready for the word today? Amen. All right. Let's rest on our feet. For those of you who know kind of how we do this, just everybody rest on your feet. Grab your Bibles. If you have one with you, if you have your Bible in your tablet or your phone, if you got a good old-fashioned paper Bible, that's all good. Amen. We have a confession of faith. I just want you to repeat after me if you don't mind. Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe God's word. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same after hearing God's word. I am being transformed by the ever-living, uncompromising, never-changing, ever-powerful Word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Everybody believing, everybody serving, and everybody giving. Amen. Just remain standing for just a moment. Galatians chapter 3, we'll read two verses, verses 13 and 14 in your hearing. Father, we need your help, always. None of me and all of you. We break up the fallow ground of our own hearts that we might receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls. We give you praise. We honor you on this day that you have made where we celebrate your resurrection. So we give you praise because you are alive and well. So we give you glory. Touch every person, every family, every life, and we will give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Galatians chapter 3. This is a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote uh, to what's called the Galatians. This is the church at Galatia, if you will. And uh, how we need to receive this, even in 2024, in Muncie, Indiana, or wherever you are listening to this or watching this broadcast, uh, we are to receive it as the words of the Holy Spirit. And God used the Apostle Paul to speak to this church, and he's speaking to us now. So Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, the word of the Lord in the New King James Version. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So far, the scripture, you may be seated. It is probably pretty obvious, but I'll say it even though it is that, Um, Our theme today is redeemed. And so my message today uh, is entitled, Redeemed by the Blood of Jesus. Redeemed by the Blood of Jesus. And I'm going to do my best as I have prepared this message to kind of articulate what this day is really all about. And we know um, we always prepare and uh, perhaps every church around the world on Easter Sunday, as I like to call it, Resurrection Day, um, prepares to celebrate 
basically the foundation of our faith. So listen to me just for a moment. Um, if Jesus is still in the grave, then we are still in our sins. The foundation of Christianity really is that not that Jesus died, although we celebrate that on Good Friday, Friday and we, we do all of that, and that has been a great thing. Um, but it's not about just him dying. If he died and didn't raise from the dead, we are still in our sins. So we understand that when Sunday comes, we celebrate the fact that Jesus got up from the grave. And he is alive forevermore. Somebody ought to be excited about that. I know I am. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all of my fears are gone, as the song says. And so our theme for Easter this year is obvious. It is redeemed. And you won't remember everything that I say today. But I do want you to remember that word redeemed or redemption, if you will, because it is so important for us to understand what Jesus has done for us. Redemption means to gain or to regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Let me say that one more time. Redemption means to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Now, uh, the exchange for payment is important for us to really understand because it has to match or exceed the value of what is being redeemed. You know, when I go to McDonald's, <laughs> which is not very often to get food, at least. Um, when I go, I have a certain level of expectation based upon my experience there and also what I perceive the cost should be. And we know things have changed over the years, and we know that things have gone up in price just about everywhere. You know, back in the day, I'm old enough to remember when you could get a, a really good full meal for about a dollar. <laughs> Anybody remember that? I mean, you can have a dollar, you get your hamburger, some french fries, a drink, <laughs> go skipping your way, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, those days been gone. It's over. But I, I have an expectation, you know, you're going to spend a little bit of money uh, at McDonald's, but if, if I order me a Big Mac and a order of fries and a, a sweet tea or whatever it is that I have, and uh, the person comes to the window or, or comes to the counter, wherever I'm ordering from, and they say, uh, that'll be $102.20, I may be calling on Jesus, you know, because, listen, the value of what I expect to eat doesn't match what they charge of me. Are y'all still here? I don't know if any of you in this room have ever been to Ruth Chris or St. Elmo's or someplace, some high-end place like that. You know, if they say it's going to cost you a hundred bucks, then you have a certain expectation. Okay, I'm willing to pay that because, listen, what I think or I perceive that I'm receiving matches what it is that you're charging me. Are y'all still here? Yeah, I'm not saying that a steak is worth a hundred bucks. Hallelujah. I'm probably not. Amen. But the blood, listen, the blood of Jesus is the only currency that can redeem a soul back to God's possession. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm a gospel preacher. I believe the word of God. And we got all kind of voices out there saying that you can get to God some other way. You can get to the Father. All you got to do is be sincere. And you just got to believe any old thing and believe in a man upstairs or a God somewhere. No, that is not true. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Well, you all for exclusive. Yes, it's exclusive because there is no other way to the Father except through Jesus. 
So I thought I would get that out the way. Just in case we have some confusion. He is the only way. And so the Hebrew writer in chapter 10 says this, and I, I want to talk about this just for a moment, starting at verse 1 of chapter 10. Uh, listen now, the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come. Not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have, if they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. Let, let me explain that just a minute. Listen, back in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, um, they used to offer bulls and goats and uh, different things, different animal sacrifices that shed their blood to push back, really, as a type and shadow of Jesus coming later. And so what they did was they put off the judgment for their sins another year. So they had to come back every year, give more sacrifices, but it never could wipe away their sins completely. Are y'all still here? Mm -hmm. If they could have provided perfect cleansing and sacrifices would have stopped for the worshipers would have pur been purified once for all time and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, here it is now, but instead those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So let me say this, we, we are celebrating Jesus, of course, today, uh, but if all those bulls and all those goats had a died, I mean, millions and millions of them over the course of time, if Jesus had not come to ratify what they did, they would still be in their sins. Bulls and goats are the wrong type of currency to pay for our sins. Bulls and goats were like a pawn shop ticket. I know y'all ain't never been to the pawn shop. <laughs> you have so long to redeem your pawned item before it is lost forever. If you're not willing to pay the price, your item will not be redeemed. Mm-hmm. All this Easter activity from Good Friday until now is totally about redemption. And we enjoy the children, we enjoy the music and the choir and all the festivities. We, we love seeing everybody, you know, uh, when we come into the sanctuary and hug and, and love on one another. It is a wonderful thing and we come together and we all have t-shirts and things like that. It, that's all good. But I, I need you to understand this is all about redemption. It is all about the saving of our soul. The Apostle Paul, in another place, in Romans chapter 5, he says this, verse 12, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died. From the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. 
But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Follow me now. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Are y'all still tracking? So I I need you to really hear me here because we as preachers and uh, people who have walked with God a period of time, sometimes uh, we can confuse people because we make this a religious exercise and we place all these different kinds of demands on people and all those kinds of things. And, And sometimes people are confused about what this is really all about and what Jesus actually has done for us. Let me explain real briefly what this is all about. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, most of us have heard about that. Um, when he sinned, his blood and his tainted blood, his sinful blood, was passed along to every person that would come after him. It's like DNA, if you will. You know, my father is in the room. He couldn't deny me if he wanted to. Because that DNA is working. It's working. Somebody say it's working. Yes, it's working. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my son's in here somewhere. I think I saw him earlier. And you know what? He can't, I can't deny him either. I got some grandsons around here. And you know what? I can't deny them either. It because DNA works, that, that bloodline is doing its thing, even if you can't physically see it, it's doing its work. And so when Adam sinned, even though you are just a little baby that comes in this world, uh, listen, you are coming here as a sinner. Well, pastor, I've never done anything wrong. I mean, I, 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 why, why would I be a sinner? You're a sinner because you have inherited the sin that Adam committed. That's why we need a Savior. That's what today is all about, to understand. And and so I need you to know that you may be sitting in this room, you may be online, you may think, man, I've never done anything to to warrant death. Listen, it's not about that. It is about what Adam did was passed along to all of us. That means that we need Jesus to come into our heart so that he can eradicate our sins. That's what the Apostle Paul really is talking about. So Adam, listen, Adam caused all of us, listen to me now, to be pawned to the devil because of sin. (laughs) The blood of Jesus is the payment to redeem us back to God. And see, we need to understand that because, listen, Allah's blood ain't going to do nothing for you. Can I say that one more time? Listen, Muhammad, he might have been a good guy. I didn't know him. (laughs) But I, I, I do know this. He died, and you know what? He's still dead. But Jesus came. Come on here. Jesus came to earth. Come on, he gave his life as a ransom. You know what? If I was the only one on earth, he would have still came. If you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have still came to save your soul, to die for your sin, so that you would not have to be eternally separated from him. That's how much he loved you. And we need to understand. Listen to me. This is not hard. Now, and, and I was going to be really calm today. <laughs> I was like, you're going to have a lot of guests today, Bishop, and just calm down, you know, just be cool. You know, I got a doctorate. I, was, I could show my intelligentsia, you know what I'm saying. I said, no, 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 this thing is too good. 
And the devil has lied to some of you to make you think that this is difficult. No, 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 no. The Holy Ghost can come upon you and change the trajectory of your life. Listen, and you may not change before he comes in, but when he comes in, he will change the way you think, the way you talk, the way you walk. He will change your entire life. And we have been hoodwinked into thinking that this is difficult and we got to do a bunch of stuff to earn salvation. Listen, there's nothing you will ever do to earn heaven. Don't even, don't even try to compare yourself with somebody else. Well, I don't do what they do. You, you, <laughs> you might not do what they did, but you did something. Just being born is enough to go to hell. Are you still here? We need a savior. And that's what today is all about. And I need you to hear me now. It's the blood of Jesus that pays for our sin. See, see, because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's the payment for sin. It's not just temporary death. It's eternal death. Look at Romans 5, 17 again. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. Notice now, don't miss this. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. It's not automatic. Yes, Jesus died for our sins, but you've got to receive it. You know, earlier this year, no, actually it was last year, 23, I had a bunch of uh, student loan debt, a bunch of debt. Now, you know, I, I've been in school a long time in, in my latter years, hallelujah, amen. And so I was making my payments and all that kind of stuff, but I've been working, uh, as they say, in the nonprofit world. And I made over 120 payments to pay on this debt. And somebody who I don't know, whoever the legislators were, whatever it is, they came up with this thing that says, if you've made so many payments after so long, we will forgive your debt. Hey! Glory to God. You know what happened? I had to apply, though. It didn't happen automatically. I had to point to the fact that I made the payments and I qualify for the break. And you know what happened? I was looking online uh, at my account. And when I, when I looked at it one day, it said zero balance. <laughs> you know what that means? That means paid in full. And I'm telling you, you need Jesus the Christ to pay your debt. It's the blood of Jesus that wipes your sin debt out. Mm-hmm. Jesus paid for your redemption by shedding his blood. Here's the key. All you have to do is receive it. And we have an enemy. He's called the devil. His job is to make you think he doesn't exist. So he can deceive you. Listen, he's trying to stop you from understanding all you have to do is receive a free gift. Salvation is not difficult. All you have to do is receive. Come on, music team. Galatians chapter 3, our last scripture. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. Listen to me now. We've all heard this before. We owed a debt that we could not pay. But Jesus gave his life so that we could be free. So I want you to listen to me just for, the, for a moment. There's no reason to live outside of the will of God, outside of the protection of God, when Jesus has made a way for you. 
Why don't you say, well, you know, them Christians, they some bunch of hypocrites. Well, what I say to that is, why don't you get saved and show us how it's done? Listen, we're, 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 listen, we're not serving other Christians. People talk about this stuff all the time. I, I don't know about coming back to church. I don't know about coming back to God. You know, I got church hurt. And listen, all of us have been hurt. I got family hurt. No offense, I got spouse hurt. What you mean? Oh, you think, you think I'm perfect? You think she's perfect? No, no, no. We got hurt. We got to get over stuff. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on. I got school hurt. If I didn't study like I was supposed to, it got a jacked up grade. I was hurt. <laughs> but let me tell you this now. Jesus hasn't done anything to you. He stands ready to save you. To give you a new life. Well, I don't know about, you know, my life is all messed up. Maybe I'll wait till I get it together. Listen, you can't get it together. None of us can get it together without him. Stand on your feet if you would. Just for a moment. We're going to sing in a minute. If you are in this room, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that everything has a purpose. And even if we don't know perfectly what's going on behind the scenes, I know that God orchestrates situations. And he does things even unbeknownst to us. And many of you came because you were invited by your, by your family, by your friend. You want to just, just honor God in some kind of way by coming to church. Many of you maybe haven't come maybe since last Christmas or something like that. I, I don't know what your situation is. But listen, it's not a coincidence that you are here right now. And he knew that you would be here. So what I want to say to you is, there's no reason to leave this service the same way you came. If you have never confessed Jesus as your Lord, if you have never just received his atoning payment for your sin debt, you can do that today. And I want to encourage you. We as human beings, we are in many ways urgency laden. I'll, I'll put it that way. We, we, when, when things don't feel urgent, we don't think it's going to happen. But I want to I remind you of something. We are all going to have to stand before God at some point in time all of us and when it's time to stand before him there will not be time to fix it up won't won't be won't be time to go back and, and ask for forgiveness or or forgive that person that we've been holding hostage so we might as well get it together today might as well get it right today so if God is touching you in any way if he's drawing you, as the scripture says, you can't even come to him unless he draws you. So that tug on your heart, that reminder that says, you know what? I need to make a change. I've been living my life for myself. I came to that conclusion many, many years ago. Many of us in this room, let me see the hands of, of you. At some point in time, you, you came to the conclusion, I need God in my life. Well, I tell you, I can't speak for them, but I can tell you for me, I have not regretted that one second. Haven't been perfect. Haven't always done everything right. But Jesus, as the songwriter says, is the best thing that ever happened to me. 
So if God is dealing with you, we're not going to embarrass you or anything like that. We're going to all pray together. I just want us to pray this prayer. And here's how this spiritual thing works. If we pray, we open our mouth and confess, and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Now, religious folk can say you got to do a whole bunch of other stuff. Got to holler and scream. Got to roll on the floor. Got to get emotional, demonstrative. No, no, no. You can just in your right mind say, God, I have jacked this thing up and I know I need you. So I want us to pray this prayer together. Just repeat after me. Everybody bow your head. Maybe close your eyes if you can. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I give you my life from this day forward. I want to live for you forever. Thank you for your blood, which washes away my sins. I confess I am a brand new person. Thank you for welcoming me into the kingdom of God. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can live for you and fulfill my purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now listen, if you pray that prayer from your heart, you got translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's what happens. Now, that's not the end, that's the beginning. Next Sunday, we got baptisms. Now, the Bible says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And we understand what that means, but what, what, what that is is an obedience to what has happened today. No reason to put it off. So you go on the mobile app, and it's got a section on the mobile app that says made new. You punch that, it'll take you to a screen, you say start, and it'll give you a way to sign up for baptisms. It's going to be next Sunday, and I'm going to be dunking you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's going to be another step. And we're praying in the meantime that you get full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the power of God so that you can say no to temptation, so that you can say yes to the will of God. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost. So if you pray that prayer, we want to see you next week in baptism. Is that all right? Amen. Pray. Let's praise God for that. Amen. All right, well, we get ready to go home. Amen. Our choir is coming with the closing song, and then I'm going to come back and just a, a really quick benediction prayer, and then we're going home. Or you ain't got to go home, you just got to leave here. All right. Amen. All right, let's receive our Destiny Christian Center International Mass Choir. Amen. I don't know. Are you ready to worship him one last time? We're going to declare that Jesus is alive. So this is one of those songs where we, where we need you to move, okay? So you're going to move out of your space. This is a, a song where you can just declare your love for him. Begin to clap your hands like this.
Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. He is glory, alive. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, glory, Ooh, glory, glory to God. Father, we thank you that you are alive. With all power in your hands. And you said that all power in heaven and in earth belongs to you. And you told us, therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every ethnic group. So God, as we leave this service, touch every person, every family, every life, those, God, that are new babes in the kingdom, keep them by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Encourage every person that is in this room, all of those that are watching online, God, let your will be done in the earth. And we will give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' matchless name, amen and amen. God bless you. He is alive. Hallelujah. All the first-time guests see someone at the first-time guest station. God bless you.